You are sitting with your friends and they are speaking ill of another brother who is absent. What would you do? Would you defend him or would you take part in that backbiting? What's the right choice? To know that, stay with us. is due to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His aid and we ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evils of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. And I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone, who has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is His servant and His messenger. Dear viewers, I greet you with the greeting of Al-Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of your show, For the Sake of Allah. We are dealing with the ways and the means that will help us maintain this beautiful treasure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us. Allah, because of the high position that He has given brotherhood of, of Al-Islam, brotherhood between the Muslims, Allah has provided us with the means and the ways to maintain this brotherhood and improve it and uh, make it of a better quality so that the Muslims will maintain this mutual love amongst them. From the ways to maintain this brotherhood and improve it and to have more love in the Muslim society and more love amongst the Muslims, more love amongst the members of this great and big family that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us members of is to defend your brother. When your brother is absent, and he's being attacked. Somebody is, has attacked his honor. Somebody has spoken ill about him. Somebody has said something evil about him. As a Muslim who's concerned for his brother, who cares for his fellow Muslim, you should defend your brother and you should always speak the truth. So today, inshallah, we have our guests, Brother Muhammad and Brother Abdul Rahman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We will discuss this important topic. Because today we can see that people have deemed it easy and they see it as a light thing and as a minor issue to talk ill about others. And at a time when backbiting has become the norm and it's become the thing that people uh, resort to in their settings and in their gatherings, in, they just talk about other people, this man did this and that, and this is the only thing they chew and they can amuse themselves with. So we will today see insha'Allah and try to get the examples and highlight the importance of defending one another. When you are absent, you would like that if somebody speaks ill about you, that one of your brothers defends you and speaks the truth. So we will see insha'Allah from the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam and the high morality and the good character of the Muslim, how to behave in situations where people will attack the honor of your fellow Muslim. So now we know that from brotherhood is to defend your brother when he is around. He's with you. Someone tries to oppress him as the Prophet says, You champion or you help your brother whether he is oppressed or he is an oppressor. He's doing oppression. So the companions when they heard this hadith, they said, okay, we help him when somebody else oppresses him. But how can we help him when he wrongs somebody else? Well, we know that the morality of the Muslim entails that you should, you should not help the one who is doing oppression. But the Prophet ﷺ clarified the issue and he said that That means if you see him doing wrong or he's wronging somebody else, you prevent him from doing that oppression. So when your brother is around, you have to defend him. You have to show him the right way. If he gets off track, you bring him back to the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. Now, if one of you was to be in a situation, for example, say Muhammad, you are sitting with your friends and sometimes people have jealousy and they have envy. So they start try to backbite this person if he's absent. Mm -hmm. So if you are sitting with your brothers 
and they start talking ill about somebody else. Maybe this is the truth, maybe it's a lie. So what naturally would, you, would be your, your behavior if this is your brother, you are concerned for him. I want you to put yourself in that position and tell me what your natural reaction would be in this situation. Well, uh, if I see them that uh, they accept advice, it's acceptable by them, I will surely advise them not to uh, go into that issue mm -hmm. without the presence of the uh, uh, brother that they want to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, or uh, also uh, try to uh, avoid the subject at all and maybe uh, go move on to another topic. Uh, but uh, surely I will go straight into uh, to, uh, stopping them from uh, going into an uh, issue of uh, saying bad about a brother or that's or not right. Backbiting the brother. Uh, backbiting them, right. yes. Okay, what if they carry on? What would you do, Abdul Rahman? Let's say they are there, they're talking about this brother. Okay, he did, he did this and that. And you know, when yesterday when he was in that place, some, sometimes people, okay, he went to that mm -hmm. hotel and we don't know what things happened there. And you are sitting and you try to give them advice that, brothers, this is backbiting, you shouldn't be doing that. So they still, they carry on doing mm -hmm. that. What would you, what would be your reaction? For example, if, if they're at my house and they're there for lunch right. and they're kind of hungry, I'll just bring the food and <laughs> we'll start to start to eat as okay. to avoid that. So keep them busy with, some, with eating. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What if there's no food anyway? Okay, that's one situation. I mean, uh, how would you behave if they still doing the same evil? I'll try to say that he's not he's not present, so we better s stop backstabbing him. Okay, if they carry on doing that, uh, actually, I'll be like, okay, if if it really gets really to the top, uh, I'll just leave. Very good. Let's leave in a nice way. Okay, Marshall. I gotta go. I have something to do. Very good. You remember when we talked about advice and giving sincere advice? These are brothers. And yeah. we are human beings. Sometimes we have envy, we have jealousy. It's natural. Sometimes we fall into it. Sometimes we, f we bite, backbite a brother. It doesn't mean that we are evil people. It doesn't mean that someone did something wrong, that he's an evil person. No. Mm -hmm. It means he needs advice. And we should give them advice exactly. in the way that is best. The way we discussed when we talked about uh, the advice, to give it mm -hmm. in the way that is best, yes. according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, if they refuse and they say they keep backbiting that brother and speaking ill about him, Allah subhanahu wa taala describes the believers in uh, Surah Al-Furqan. He says, "وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورِ وَإِذَا مَرُوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُوا كِرَامًا." They are the ones who don't witness falsehood. So when when something wrong is going or falsehood is being there they don't take part in it so if you are sitting with a group of people they are backbiting they're speaking ill of a, another brother who's absent what you do you give them advice in the way that is best they insist upon that you tell them brothers you know this is a sin and I fear the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if I stay with you I might be included in the punishment if Allah wills to punish you um, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so I have to leave because this is an evil thing that you are doing so this is a good thing do you know why because sometimes people they don't take lessons from advice if you give it verbally but if they see that you are getting upset because of that evil they will rethink mm -hmm. they will think it over and they will try to rectify the situation and you shouldn't at, at least you shouldn't be there and I want you to contemplate in the verse Muhammad the verse, uh, You know, Can you elaborate more on the word اللغو and how they should uh, do in, the, in that verse, how they should be kirama when they do well, the اللغو. اللغو is, is, is going uh, away from uh, the right, uh, right uh, speech or Very. Uh, right uh, conversation. Very. Uh, and maru uh, kirama should be like uh, going away with pride. And you have to have your head high and move away from doing something astray from the uh, path of the uh, sunnah. Very good. Yeah. Very good. This gives us a, a, a new dimension now, mashallah, to this. Mm -hmm. You see, al as you said, is to waste your time with speech that is f fruitless. There's no benefit in saying that. For example, you sit and you say, I'll count, okay, how many flowers are around me here? Well, that's fruitless. There's nothing, no benefit from this speech. Why do you waste your time? And usually, it's like you said, Sheikh. It's uh, it comes from the desire of or the the hate and the envy 
usually. That's it. But as we then, said, then, we're still we have, yeah. we're still human beings. We we yes, have to fall in that yeah. sometime or another. Now, if this happens, as I said, Allahu is is not backbiting. Backbiting is evil. Lahu is less in its evil. It's just speech in, in which there is no benefit. You're just wasting your time saying nothing where there's no benefit in this life and no benefit in the next. There's no reward from that. So even this, Allah describes the believers that they turn away from that. Marru kirama. They go with honor, with mm. their honor and with their pride. <coughs> we, don't, we are people of honor and dignity. We don't fall into, we don't waste our time with that. So we keep away. So what do you think about backbiting and speaking ill about your brother? Now, if somebody said something evil about you and you were absent and you heard that a brother defended you, mm. what would be your reaction, Muhammad? Well, actually, it would be like uh, giving me more confidence in the, in the brotherhood. Yani, uh, of course, it's uh, something real positive and it, it, it makes my heart feel more love to this brother who uh, speaks uh, the truth mm. about it. That's exactly. It. Yeah. yeah. And we are discussing yeah. the means to strengthen brotherhood. Yes. And the that, means yeah. to strengthen brotherhood. That even happened to me. Yeah, subhanAllah. Like, uh, yeah, actually, go ahead, uh, I even misjudged the brother. I yeah. thought that he, 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 he would be the backstabber also. Because then I heard from people that he always said good about me and defended me. So that made, made us get closer again. MashaAllah. Mm -hmm. You see, it, it strengthens that bond of brotherhood. Yes. Because if I hear, if I, if I heard that someone really defended my honor in my absence, I would really appreciate that. And you can feel the honesty from that person. Okay, what makes him defend me? Why doesn't he take part in that backbiting? Mm -hmm. I can do that. And so this is some of the fruits that we strengthen this brotherhood, and this is part of our religion. So yeah. when you defend your brother, and he's absent. Uh, take into consideration that you are doing this for the sake of Allah not for the sake of him hearing about that so now he would appreciate me more some people do that mm. so that they can add to their credibility then they can abuse this credibility no we are doing it for the sake of Allah and you don't go no the next day and go to your brother okay you see they spoke ill about you and I defended you no that's not the way that the Muslim should behave himself we do this for the sake of Allah because this is the manners of the Muslim and you know Islam and the Muslim character, it builds in the person honesty, builds honesty in the person and it builds in him uh, that he doesn't really resort to evil things and the decadent ways of dealing with people. Mm -hmm. You know, the filthy things, sometimes backbiting, lying, the Muslim is high above that. Islam elevates your character to honorable things and do things and this is why the Muslim naturally defends the honor of his brother. So this is, these are some of the benefits that we will get in this life from defending the honor of our brothers. But Allah has prepared great reward for the ones who defend the honor of their brothers. We will find out inshallah so that we can benefit and our viewers can benefit inshallah. But we will have a short break. So after we will meet inshallah in a few minutes. And I say to my, our viewers, stay with us inshallah after a few minutes. We will turn and see the high merits of defending the honor of our brothers and sisters in Islam. So stay tuned. إذا دك إذا دكت الأرض كذ دكا Do you want to learn how to recite the Quran? Do you want to read Islamic books in Arabic? You may enroll in a small group. العسل من السوق. اشترى. نعم اشترى. A private lesson. من مثلها في فضلها. For at your own pace to fit your schedule. Courses for sisters with female instructors. We're bringing you the latest software technology, professional instructors, and a state of the art classroom to the comfort of your home. Enroll now in Huda Academy. Huda Academy, your gateway to authentic Islamic knowledge.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're still watching for the sake of Allah and we're still discussing the importance of this main principle in Islam, defending the honor of your brother or your sister. <coughs> now, we came to know that whenever you defend the honor of your brother, this will cause uh, the brotherhood to become stronger, stronger. and uh, better in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, with regards to the reward that we will get, inshallah, from Allah, it is immense. But the Prophet ﷺ warned us against failing to defend your brother. Some people think, okay, I have the choice either to let the people speaking ill of my brother or maybe some, sometimes you have a neighbor, he's your brother, and you see thieves going into his house. They're trying to take his stuff. This is a part of, honor, of defending the honor of your brother or his property. So yeah. you have, if your brother is absent, it is as if it's your property. It is an obligation that you should defend him. You should protect all his interests as you do to yourself. And we came across the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that no one of you will truly believe until he loves for his brother the good things that he loves for, for himself. himself. So yeah. this is how we treat our brothers. The Prophet ﷺ awesome. one day warned the companions against the evil of failing to protect the honor of your brother. Sometimes, okay, I have some friends, I do some business with them. Now they are speaking ill or they are doing harm to another brother who is absent. Maybe he's present as well. Maybe he's present as well. So, and you say, okay, if I give them advice, they will give up doing business with me. So this will affect me negatively. This will affect my business. Now you have the choice, either to do the right thing or to do the wrong thing and be inclined more to this life. Mm -hmm. Maintain your, uh, your interest or your, uh, your benefit in this life, but you sacrifice the brotherhood. If people do this, the Prophet ﷺ said, Anyone who lets down his brother when his honor or his property is being attacked, he fails to protect him, he lets him down, then Allah will let him down in a time when he needs help and he needs support. We know in Islam, al jaza min jins al-amal. The punishment is in accordance with the evil that you have done. You do evil, Allah will exactly. punish, me, punish you the same way. And is, isn't there this hadith also, the Prophet ﷺ says, Kama to deen or to den. Very good. What goes around comes around. That's it. Yeah. That's it. If you do evil, for example, if you deal with, with riba, you want money, Allah will take the blessing from your money and you will become in need. Subhanallah. So if you let down your brother, then Allah will let you down. So if you want to be safe at the time of hardship, don't always defend your brother. Help him whether he's absent or he is present. And then the Prophet ﷺ explained the other side. He said, and anyone who defends his brother or the honor of his brother or the, uh, the property of his brother when he's in need, then Allah will defend him at a time when he direly needs help and he needs defend, defense. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is from, uh, we said, it, this thing strengthens brotherhood and even it helps you at the time of hardship. Furthermore, Abu Darda, one of the great companions, narrated from the Messenger Wasallam, and he said that anyone who defends the honor of his brother, then Allah will save his face from the hellfire. So it's a means to salvation. You see how all the regulations of Islam, they perfect our life here in this world and they provide us with more credit in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it brings us closer to paradise, brings us closer to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, one of the companions, when the Prophet sallallahu one day set out to the, in the expedition of Tabuk, he went to fight. One of the great companions, he remained behind the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He didn't go. And he had no excuse, Ka'b ibn Malik. His story is well known. It was mentioned in Surah At-Tawbah. Now, when the Prophet ﷺ was out, and he realized that Ka'b ibn Malik was missing. He wasn't with him. So he said, where's Ka'b ibn Malik? One man said, oh, Messenger ﷺ, he's busy with his wealth. He's busy with his money. And so he didn't want to come. So uh, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, one of the uh, well-known companions, he had knowledge. He said, what an evil statement you are saying. He said to that man, how do you, how do you say that about him? You don't know what the situation is. So he, said, he defended mm -hmm. his brother at that time. We, all Messenger of Allah, we only know about Ka'b ibn Malik, all that which is good. So this is the norm, this is the character of the Muslim. We defend our brothers, whatever the situation is. If they are doing evil, we stop them from that. If they are being oppressed, then we have to defend them and be on their side. Now, there are many complications to this, but obviously, do you have any questions regarding how to defend your brother? Sometimes you fall in situations Actually, that are tricky. 
actually I, I wanted to ask uh, yeah. sometimes for example you can find a brother he's about to get married and the woman he chooses as his future wife uh, you heard about her stuff or you may know bad stuff about her or about her reputation so in this case is it ba is it is it forbidden to tell him as to advise okay or that's, that's, or yeah. or we shouldn't that's a very yeah. good question if someone wants to get married this is something that he this is a person he's taking as a mate mm -hmm. as a wife or a husband and they are supposed to live together for the rest of their lives so now we we say now this brother who's getting married he is your brother mm -hmm. the wife or that the he the woman he's taking in marriage is your sister so now you have brotherhood on both sides we learned from a previous episode that from the rights of your brothers that you give him sincere advice so now your brother wants to marry a woman or a sister and we know that the character of that sister there's something wrong with it there's something wrong with that sister she has some bad characteristics bad traits that will affect the marriage mm -hmm. and that affects her dean there is some problem with her dean okay mm -hmm. she, for example she she has a problem with establishing the prayer on time she doesn't pray on time or for example she doesn't fast or for example she makes tabarraj okay these things now she's your sister she has rights upon you and he's your brother from the rights upon you to give him sincere advice so this is not backbiting mm -hmm. you have to tell the truth this is a time when you are considered to be a witness mm -hmm. so you have to tell the, but you tell it to the person who is concerned you don't you don't air it uh, <laughs> and spread it amongst the people no this becomes backbiting Okay. So and it becomes sca becomes scandal. Uh -huh. So you only give the person who's concerned. If there is something that has to do with marriage, you have to say that it's an obligation. It's not backbiting. And if you are present, then the person actually should tell the person who's concerned. But if you are present and this advice is being given, then it's not about defending. Okay. No, it's about telling the truth. It's about telling and the what truth. about Sheikh? Like, if if it's in the past and she changed and she became good, like well, I knew this that is in, in the, the past, the, yeah. And you know that. Well, this thing is over with. It has come to an end. She no longer has this problem. Then Allah in Allah Hayyun Sitir. Allah is bashful and He likes to not to expose the people who had okay. sinned and they. This is between her and Allah. This is how the situation is. Muhammad, do you have anything to add about this? Yes, I have a question also. Uh, what if, like, um, uh, I stand in court and uh, I was asked about uh, a brother or something like that? So what would be the situation okay. over there? Now this is a witness in court. Yeah. This is again an advice. You have to give it. You have the rights. Because we, ha we said these are rights to the general Muslims. All of them are our brothers and sisters. And these are the rights they have upon us. Okay. If the matter is, especially in court, it is a matter of somebody else's right. Yeah. So you have to give, or you have to say the truth. If the judge asks you, you have to say the truth. You have to be open about that. It's not backbiting. And even if you are sitting in court, you can't say, for example, oh, you can't say this, this brother is this and that. If it is the truth, but if it is a lie, then you have to openly declare it and say, this person is telling a lie. This is my brother. We know about him, that which is good. Just as happened with Mu'adh, when he was with the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that man said to him, well, he said, oh, okay, he is busy with, with his wealth and he preferred not to come in that expedition. Mu'adh said to him, May Allah be pleased with him. He said, this is an evil statement that you are saying. We know about him to be a righteous person. We know about him to be a righteous person. So now we can see that Islam, mashallah, mashallah. it has set the regulations to strengthen this brotherhood. Well, if, if the people or if the world implements Islam, it would be com a completely different world. There will be no oppression. There will be no injustice. It would be a beautiful world where people love one another. And you can see, if you defend, if someone defended me, I would really appreciate that. Because, and we know this is widespread now among people. And something that, as we defend our brothers, something is more deserving of our defense, is that we should defend our religion. We can see that Islam is being attacked and opposed, and it's been portrayed as an, a religion that incites people or calls people to shedding blood and terrorizing people. Islam is about fundamentalism. No, we have to defend the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the problem now, people, a part of it as well, uh, especially some orientalists, they attack the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They so say so. the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, he had these evil traits and they try to misuse some of the facts, some of the things that happened at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is our obligation 
to defend the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He's the one who, who the most deserves our defense. We should defend him. So we can see that, mashallah, Islam is calling Allah. us to perfect our brotherhood. And if this really is being, this very point is being implemented in our societies, you can imagine that scandal will have no place. Backbiting will come to a stop. It won't be there anymore. And you can imagine such a society where all these high values are widespread and people acknowledge them. And this causes us as well, when someone is backbiting or is speaking ill or attacking the honor of your brother and you defend him, next time this other brother who was doing that evil, who was backbiting the other, he would think it over. He would think to himself, why am I doing that evil? Yeah. Why, am I, why don't I take the example of this good brother and I follow his example and I, instead of uh, attacking the honor of my brother, I should defend him. You see? True. This should be the case. Have you come across any experience where some of your brothers was attacked and you saw someone defending him or what impact it has on his life or on their relationship? Actually, once uh, it happened that I had two brothers and they both friends of mine. Mm -hmm. they, they were even about to fight. Subhanallah. So I was like in between of them. So Alhamdulillah, yani, in the end I was able to make them get to be friends mm -hmm. and get to Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And they were both backstabbing each other. Because I was very calm and I, I was trying to listen but in the same time give advice. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. You know, you, you reminded me of a beautiful verse in Surah Al-Isra where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O oh Muhammad, say to my servants to say the things that are good. This is why the Muslim should always be good in speech. Because speech is a reflection of what is in his heart. Speech is the reflection of our character. So say to my servants to say that which is good. Shaitan is trying his best to create enmity amongst you, to destroy this brotherhood. Because Shaitan knows that the strength of the Muslims lies in brotherhood, lies in this mutual bond. That is firm and strong. And this is the point of strength in the Muslim. Shaitan is trying to break that. Yeah. Shaitan is trying to destroy it. So we see when we defend our brothers and we protect their properties and we deal with them as we deal with ourselves. We like the good things for them as we like for ourselves. This will create a very beautiful society, a very strong community as was at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And we saw what Mu'adh bin Jabal, may Allah be pleased with him, did. Yeah. And this is the example we would like to follow. So, inshallah, we will implement this in our lives and I hope our viewers as well, inshallah, will implement that so that we develop a beautiful Muslim society and a strong bond of brotherhood amongst ourselves. And inshallah, this will lead us to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have to say to my brothers, Jazakumullah khairan for being with us and for your contributions. And we say to our viewers, Jazakumullah khairan for listening. And may Allah bless us all and make us benefit from the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I have to say now, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.